Welcome to episode 10 of Photomime Talks podcast. We are so glad you could join us today. And yet again, we have a very, very special guest, someone who, you know, similar to Photomine as a whole, you know, really deeply cares about saving and cherishing memories, you know, into your future and to your fam families, but with a little bit of a twist. So today we have David Gutenmacher. He is, well, he is a social media manager at a healthcare company as his day job. However, it's his hobby that truly, and his side project that truly brings him to us today. Um, and I'm going to let him talk about that on his own. But David, thanks so much for being here. Of course, I'm honored. Yeah. So David, if you could, you know, as I kind of alluded to, you clearly have something, something going on that's, you know, while social media at a healthcare company is exciting, it's not necessarily Photomind's, uh, Photomind's bread and butter. Um, so I would love you can talk a little bit about the Museum of Lost Memories. A few years ago during the pandemic, I started collecting old photographs, home movies, letters, any sort of lost memories at thrift stores and um, flea markets. And I would try to find the owner by posting them onto social media and building a community to help me find the owner and return them back to the original owner. Um, so I think the beginning of 2020, I posted my first lost memory. And I think a month later, I posted this digitized um, home movie. It was a small tape and I posted, it was a vacation from Africa. I posted it not thinking much of it. I thought it would take forever to find the first owners of, of something that I find at a thrift shop. And within a month and a half of starting the project, we found someone. All it took was posting it to TikTok and Instagram. It got 2 million views. And one of my followers decided to find the person on their own. And since then I was hooked. So awesome. So what what was the what was the impetus? What what got you to start this project other than, you know, time on your hands during a pandemic, I guess, probably a little bit, right? Yeah. Yeah. So I love all things vintage and I'm a photographer on my own time and on my own family's documentarian, historian, genealogist, whatever you want to call it. And when I, I was at a thrift store looking for old cameras and stuff like that, and there was a big pile of loose photographs at, at this thrift store. And I just thought that if, you know, I have a pretty distinct last name. I thought that if my last name was on any one of these photographs at a thrift store, that somebody would just take a minute to look me up online and they'd quickly be able to find me and, and contact me and try to return that to me. So I, I thought I should be doing it for other people. I also just think that each photograph to me is so valuable that how could I not try to give it back to somebody who might care for it? So what does that, what does that process look like? I guess I imagine it's pretty time consuming considering you have a full-time job. Yeah, so the, the best part about it so far has been that I've been able to have this incredible community online. I, it's it's mind-blowing to me all the time that I post something and within minutes, people have already researched everything about that name and, and that family. Um, but thankfully, a lot of the research is done by my followers and it's, a, it's really a community-oriented project. And because of that, my job for the most part is to find the lost memories and digitize them. So it is definitely time consuming. I mean, even converting a VHS tape or an old film reel takes, you know, two hours just to let it play through. But um, yeah, it's all worth it to me. I, I love doing it. I, I try to spend as much time as I can when I'm not at work. That's so, that's such a nice hobby. I mean, it's, you know, to just kind of find something that means something to you on the side like that, as opposed to, you know, you could be really into board games. You could be really into reading, but to find something that is, uh, you know, it takes up so much of your time and your energy, but it's like good time and good energy, I imagine, right? Yeah, I'm honestly not sure what I did before this. Like what filled up my day before I, I had this, yeah. <laughs> it's like, what are hobbies when you can have an awesome project like this? <laughs> right, true. Uh, how many people have you connected with their memories? So I, I need to update my official list, but it's, it's dozens of people, um, but it's been hundreds and, and possibly thousands of memories just because there are, there are some things that I return like a memory card that has hundreds of photos on it. Um, and then I've even had a box, a large box full of photos and slides and, and letters and even a couple home movies all belong to the same family. So that, that family alone received hundreds of, of memories back. So if I only returned memories to one person and one family got their memories back, it would have all been worth it. So that's why that first one was really like, 
motivating to keep doing it, honestly, because like I, I just felt that I was able to really give something priceless back to um, a family. Yeah. Wow. It's, it's really, it's really cool to hear that because, um, you know, actually from our side, we had a woman who was a user of ours who scanned all these photos that she had found like lying around her house, this suitcase and, uh, and the suitcase belonged to her uh, mother-in-law, something along those lines, like her husband's stepmom, something like that. And, uh, and kind of the same thing, right? Like I imagine you, you often are looking for names on the back or places and dates and things like that. Um, and it's so cool that there's, you know, not just one person like that, but that there's essentially a community of people out there who are so fascinated by other people's stories. And this, uh, I don't know, this like human desire to connect with people, even if you don't know who they are and to try to also this like, uh, like, like keyboard detective thing. Right. And, but, and using it for good, as opposed to like tracking someone down because, you know, they did yeah. something horrible back in the day, but no, it's like, like really using your time and your, you know, skills on the computer or whatnot to, uh, to really connect people. And it's kind of beautiful. Yeah. When I first started doing it, um, I think a lot of people around me who aren't into photography, family photos, they're really, they, they just, don't, they're not they don't have an interest in that I think they were a little confused with like who would be interested in this and I think it's it's proven to me that there's such a large community of people who and I think the blanket statement of what makes someone interested in this project is someone who's just interested in, in memories even on their own I think it's a lot of like you can relate to anything that I post because you have your own photographs from when you were a kid and a lot of people message me that they've lost their photographs in some capacity or another, and they wish that they can get them back. And so I think that anyone who's interested in old photos, um, old memories, nostalgia, like it's just something that so many people care about on, on a personal level. And then you just like apply that to someone else. What are the, for the people you've connected with, what are the circumstances kind of, of how they lost the photos? Yeah. So every person that I've found pretty much every family that I've returned something to has told me that if they knew they told me that it was either because someone moved away and they packed up um, all their items for the move and donated some things and they didn't realize what they were getting rid of and the other side of it is people who pass away and their houses get cleared out and the family members don't really know what's what's going on that's most of the things I've returned but I've heard stories and I think one of the most common ones here is people have storage units and if they, their family couldn't afford it or they were getting too expensive and the prices got raised and they didn't they weren't able to cover the price the storage unit just got rid of all their stuff or sold it off to someone else and a lot of times i think people um i've had so many stories of people losing their memories that way and then i've had people um who just they they lose it they don't know where it was they were on a vacation they left it somewhere and, and that's it were you curious about photos and thrift stores beforehand was the kind of the kind of thing that you know you'd be in a thrift, a thrift store even whether it's flicking through the photos that you saw or maybe even take some home with you kind of thing uh was that something that was happening before or was it kind of in a moment you're like you know I see these I think I'm gonna try to find whose photos they were originally so I'll tell you the first time I I saw old photos at a thrift store and, and made a mental note of it was back in 2017 so it was a few years before I started this project um but I didn't think of like what I could possibly do. And then I think just during the pandemic and also TikTok was starting to become popular at the end of 2019, I went back to that same thrift store just looking for cameras and I saw that same pile of photos and I thought that I, I, I yeah, I, it just didn't sit right with me that they were sitting there. I don't know. Um, but beforehand, not only like was I into thrifting and old cameras and, and that kind of thing, but I was also doing all this for my own family. I was digitizing my family VHS tapes um film reels like I had that equipment beforehand just because it was something I was doing for my own family you really were the the heart of your family's uh memories huh you're the one who's getting yeah, here, yeah. all the photos everything like that yeah but I, I've you know I've spoken to a lot of people where like they are that person too I think that like I think it's like anyone who has photo mine is, is probably that person to some extent like if you care enough to to be scanning your photos or just you're probably that person that is, is going to keep track of your family's memories. Do you have any other family members that are maybe not to the level that you are that are also kind of, you know, really curious at least to uh, kind of hold on and figure a way to kind of make these For photos sure. hold on? Yeah. 
That's good yeah, to know. Yeah, I, I, I mean, not exactly like I have, I'll say, but I think that <laughs> I have a few siblings who are like more creative also, and they, um, you know, they love photography and filmmaking. I think it like goes hand in hand with that kind of stuff. Yeah, it makes a lot of sense. So let me let me bring it back a little bit. What does uh, you know, what are you looking for, right? You're, so you're in this thrift store, obviously, you know, you, as you said, you've, you saw this pile of photos, at the same thrift store and kind of this idea kind of generating your head a little bit. What are you looking for now when you go to thrift stores or you go to, I don't know, are you going to estate sales also things like that too? Um, so like, what, do you, what, what is it, what is it about a pile? Is it just like you see a pile of photos and you, you just kind of go for all of it? Is it like a specific type of photo or some type of style that you're looking for? Anything like that? Yeah. So I'll tell you everywhere that I've gone so far to find old memories, thrift stores, estate sales, um, flea markets. I've, I've purchased people's personal collections. They were just interested in collecting old photos. And then the last place is online, eBay and online auction sites. And the truth is there's nothing like specific about any sort of memories that makes me want to buy those more than others. The truth is, is like I would buy and collect and save as many as I could. The problem is just that there's a budget, but I would really, I, I would take everything and, and I really want to take everything and I want to try to like preserve I think that the the longer that it takes to preserve his, uh, all of this stuff, um, even to get into one centralized place, like the more chances there are for something to get thrown away or go to waste or get thrown in the garbage um, and not preserved properly. And, and and so I always want to try to save as much as possible. Um, there are things that like as I'm you know out at a flea market, if there's a, a really old album. Um, and you could, there are names on the back. It, it, it's something that I know is going to be a more interesting find, um, which will probably get people more into it. And, and there are certain things that people are more interested in. I think if there's like, you know, one loose photograph without a name or any information is hard to even find the person or, or start researching. But when there's like a collection of photographs or, um, you know, a, a couple old film reels that come from the same family or an old photo album, I think all those things... Um, are, make it more of an interesting find. So once you, once, I guess, once you found the people, like what, um, how do they react? I mean, I imagine it's kind of, uh, it's gotta be really touching, right? Like it's gotta be something that you, it's gotta be the best part of the process. I imagine it's the actual, you know, connecting. Yeah. So a lot of people think that the research is, has to be like the most fun part. I think there's a lot of like Netflix shows and true crime stuff. That's like it, the, the the hunt for that information is interesting. And I always tell people if I had a button that would tell me who this person was, I would press it. So to me, the, the best part is giving it back to someone. And I think a lot of times people are shocked and confused of like, how did their photos that they've never seen before end up on social media and then make their way back to them? Like, I can't imagine what it must be like being a random Tuesday and then getting a, a, a cold email that says, I have all these photos of your family and then opening that email and seeing that I'm sure it's like a little mind blowing, but everyone has been grateful so far. Everyone's accepted the memories and been thankful. I've had one or two, I think just one person who they themselves weren't interested in taking it back, but a family member, um, a cousin was interested in it, but almost er everyone has been grateful to get their memories back. And some people were like confused about the whole process in general, but everyone's been so grateful. Any anecdotes that stick out about like, uh, you know, someone's reaction that was just kind of like over the top or anything, you know, really yeah. special. Yeah. I really go back to the first thing I ever returned. And it's kind of funny how like that one was, it like set the bar so high for what a reaction would be. It, it was the first, um, the first thing that we returned. It was this tape of a family trip to Africa and I posted it to TikTok. The guy who was in it was so grateful and it was so cool that he, you know, it's 25 years later. So he has a couple of kids now. He was a college student back in the old um, home movie. And he recreated all of those clips with his family now and duetted wow. my videos so side by side. You would see, you know, the old footage and new footage of him in his house with his kids, like just having fun with it. And that one was like so That's cool amazing. to see that like they were so happy to have it back that like it prompted them to make this video and his video did even better than mine i think my video of the original <laughs> lost lost thing it got two million views the, that whole movie and his got seven million views 
Wow. So that one was like a really cool one. To, it, it was the first one and set the bar high, but it was like starting off on the right foot for sure. Yeah. I mean, I imagine it gave you a lot of energy to kind of move forward and be like, even if you get half as much energy from somebody, you've already won. That's Look, I'll so tell cool. you, there are people who I, I emailed them and they just emailed me back saying, thank you so much. When can you send it? Like not a lot of emotion. And I get it. I, I think it's like a weird thing to process and and confusing. And, and the truth is I, I've had some people ask me like, do you still keep in touch with the people you return things to? Do you have any updates? And the truth is no, I, I don't, I don't do this to like do something with the people that I found. It's if someone wants to share their story or give me more information, you know, I ask people if they want to send me updated photos so I can share with my audience like then and now, and people love that. But the truth is if somebody just wants to accept their memories and move on, that's totally fine with me. Like they are not, if they want their pictures removed, I'll remove them too. It's, it's, it's not about, you know, promoting or getting the family members to like, you know, react in a certain way. It's just right. about returning it back. That's it. So however they want to accept it back is fine with me. Sounds perfect. Yeah. Um, so a couple of times you've, you've said we when answering a question. Um, right. And I'm curious if is the we because you have people that are helping you as far like, you know, directly with, you know, the concept of Museum of Lost Memories, you know, whether a social manager or anything like that, or is it when you say we, do you mean like the the community itself, like the people who are actually, you know, doing the research online just because they want to help? Yeah. So it, it, I say we for a few reasons, but it's definitely because there's an online community. It would be weird for me to say I found these people when someone else and or a whole group of people contributed to the research of finding that family. But I also, I, I recently started having a few people come onto the team, help me out. I have like a, a couple interns that are just volunteers that like are more involved and, and they've been like so great to help me keep things organized and, and help with the research. Um, and then also I, I, I really do see this as being bigger than one person. Like I, currently it is my project and I'm, I'm grateful that I get to be doing it honestly, but I, I really want this to become an, more of an institution one day. I, I want it to be a place that people donate their photos to if they find lost photos. I want it to be a place where, um, you know, things are not only is there a, a thorough online archive, but there's also a physical museum that people can come in person and really experience these, these old memories. And, um, and in that sense, like it's, it's, I say we sometimes, cause it's not, it's not about me, you know, it's more like the museum. And I, when speaking like for the museum, I like to say we, but, but, the truth is there's like a community that I would be doing a disservice to if I just called it, you know, myself. So, yeah. What's it like interacting with that community? I, I imagine that like many things online, there's often like a, you know, a loud minor, like a loud minority. That's, I guess in this case, probably very helpful. Um, but is it like, kind of like, you know, you have four or five people that are kind of the most helpful or is it kind of like a, you know, it can be anywhere from one to 200 people that are just like super, super helpful with a specific photo or collection, et cetera. I'll tell you, it's so many people. Um, I definitely, there are some names that I recognize in Instagram DMs and things like that. But I posted the other week, I posted um, a letter that was written in German that I needed help translating for a YouTube video. And I thought like a few people probably will like, you know, volunteer their time to translate that letter. I got hundreds of messages of people who know German and English willing to translate that letter for me. And I was blown away and I had to respond to people like, I already have it translated because I had so many people, thank you so much, but I, I don't need your help. And it, it just blows my mind every time I post memories from a specific place or part of the world, like those people rally together. I found uh, an album in Massachusetts, I, it was where I found it, but the pictures were from Lebanon um, and it was an Arab family. and that community just like all, all of a sudden showed itself. I didn't even know it existed um, it, it, in my audience, but all of a sudden there were tons of people who had, um, who were from Lebanon or had knowledge of the area and were giving me advice about what places were and how to contact the family and who might've taken the photos. And I was just blown away that every time there's like a different language or photos are taken from a different location, even in America, I'll post like the most obscure location or the most obscure city. And someone will co comment saying, Oh, I know where that is. And it just like blows my mind that there are so many people and, and people really do chip in where they're able to. That's freaking fantastic. That really is. Oh. And, uh, to hear just like that, 
it comes from all these places and it, it almost makes sense though right that like you have um especially when it comes to smaller communities or you know maybe not smaller communities but um strongly knit communities that you know so one person it takes just one person to see the photo and be like you know, I, I don't know that person specifically, but I know the store that they're behind, they're standing in front of or something mm -hmm. of that nature. It's really, really cool. Is there, um, have there been any photos or videos specifically for, that you found that, you know, less about the story of like who you connected them with, but the, the photos or videos themselves really stood out to you? Just something that was, I don't know, just like a stunning photo or, a, you know, a video of some crazy thing from the twenties. I don't know. Um, nothing too crazy. People always ask, is, is there anything crazy that you found? The truth is there's nothing like everyone's worried if I'm going to find something that's related to a murder or something like that. <laughs> so far, everything's been all cool. I will say that like one that stuck out to me was um, this, it was a canister of film that was already developed. And there was an, there was, there were two rolls of film inside the canister and a note. And on the note in German, it said, these photos were taken in April, 1943. And on the back said Friedman. And I originally recognized that to possibly be a Jewish name. And throughout the process of, of posting that, so many people were involved in identifying the locations. And, and those videos, I think to date are still some of my most viral content. I think together it had like 25 million views. It was, it was wow. mind blowing. And so many people helped identify different things, translate, um, you know, different aspects of the photos. There was like a newspaper in one of the photos that people helped identify which exact newspaper it was. It was really crazy. And we eventually found the family that it belonged to. And it was a Jewish family that fled Europe in, I think, 1938. And so those photos were taken in just a few years after and um, when they were in America. And, and it was just so cool to be able to reunite that family with these photos that were like from such a meaningful time um, and, and photos that they'd never seen before. And, and what was crazy about that find, and I still haven't wrapped my head around it, even though it's been probably a year since I've returned them, is that I posted, it took a couple of weeks to find that family, let's say two weeks. And within that two weeks, a day before we contacted the family, the last remaining person who was alive from those photographs passed away. Oh, and I was just, I, I was confused and like sad that if we would have found them a few days before, then we could have seen that person's reaction to these photos that they've never seen before. But it also made me, it, it, it made me happy that I was able to like give this family a gift back of their memories with that person right after they passed away. It must have been so special and meaningful and and i think like it, it's just like a good lesson for any of this stuff like i had one uh, a memory card um it, that was still inside of a camera and whenever i find that i know that the people didn't mean at all to give it away because they just gave away the camera they didn't realize what was on it and um and and it was a, a of an older couple all the photos were of an older couple going on cruises and and you know adventures um throughout new york and when I gave it back to the family, they had told me that both of the people in the photos actually passed away from the pandemic, from COVID. And um, and it was like just special to be able to give them back um, those memories. And, and not everything is as sad as, as those two. Like, you know, some of the special ones don't have anything to do with, um, you know, death or, but I, for whatever reason, those feel extra special to me, I would say. Yeah, they got a little more emotional heft to them. Makes a lot of sense. And it's sure. it's always in those kind of you know tra the the moments after a tragedy that like uh, that's the reason almost we hold on to these things is to, to find a yeah. little bit of joy from the past. Hundred um, percent. Yeah, it makes a lot of sense. What's this process been like for you? You know, I guess more in like a you know emotional sense. Like what I guess what do you get out of it? Like what's the you know why do you keep doing it? Right, you've been doing this for now you know, the, the, the length of the pandemic, essentially, you know, what is it, what is it that keeps you like really is so invested in it? It's a great question. I, I really do think that the fact that there are so many people out there who are looking for their own lost memories, like just the messages that I've received with people saying, I have all these baby photos that were in a storage unit and I can't, I don't have them anymore. Or the story in my family goes that there was a suitcase that we lost um, that had all of our family memories in it. Like 
just hearing those stories makes me want to keep doing it. But I also, beyond returning the photos, like there is so much out there and there is so much that won't be able to be returned because there's no information on them. And, you know, it might just be one loose photo of, of a person, which I think anyone would still love to get back. It's just, it's, it makes it almost impossible to find. You know, I often think about would I be able to recognize my ancestors from a hundred years ago in a photograph when they were teenagers or kids? I, I, I'm not sure. Um, so I think sometimes it's like discouraging knowing how much is out there, but then it almost makes me think that like, there's so much of an importance to preserve all of this stuff before it's too late. And I think that that's what gets me, you know, going the most is that like the more time that passes by, the more VHS tapes that deteriorate, the more photographs that get discarded, the more storage units that people can't afford and everything gets thrown in the trash after. So I, I really do, it, it just motivates me to think about how much is out there and that there's, you know, the, the fact that people still are grateful to get these memories back means that everything that's still out there would probably be enjoyed by somebody too. So it just makes me want to keep, I don't know, keep collecting as much as I can, as fast as I can and, and preserve everything. What's the biggest challenge to maintaining a project like this? I imagine, you know, from a from a operational standpoint and, and also emotional standpoint, there's got to be a lot of challenges somewhere, you know, and everything in between. Yeah. I'm going to say that um, definitely space, physical space. There's a lot of stuff and I have boxes upon boxes upon boxes of lost memories. Um, I'm hoping to someday soon get a, dedicated space, a warehouse type of space to, to store everything. And I hope to one day be able to archive everything properly in, in the proper containers and everything. Number two is time. I just, I have a lim limited amount of time on my hands and anyone who's helping out with the project does too. Uh, but I'm hoping that as this grows, like there are more people involved, more, more volunteers and, and more time dedicated to helping us. And then I'd, I'd say the third one is funding. I, I have a Patreon set up that people can sign up and, and sort of contribute a monthly membership to. Um, because it's a community oriented process, I, I think that that's the best way that, that that people can support. But, you know, there's not only is there an expense to running it and digitizing everything and buying the equipment, but there's also such an expense for buying the lost memories themselves. Like there are some stores that will give you boxes of old photographs for 20 bucks, but then there are some collections online that people are charging hundreds of dollars for. Um, and then there are you know, some sometimes people are charging individual photographs, you know, up to five, eight, ten dollars for one single photograph. So there's definitely um, an expense. I've set up a I'm, I'm in the process of setting up a group of collectors of people who all over the world will be collecting on their own and then we'll eventually ship them over here. Um, so what's the best way that others can help you, I guess, whether it's for funding or, you know, just in general, helping with the, the process and, you know, making sure this can keep going forward? Yeah, so so the best thing that people could do is to follow the account. And I, I say that less as a promotion, but more so as you might recognize someone or be able to contribute in a way that you don't realize. I've had so many people messaging me saying, I don't know, I, I, I'm, I love what you do, but I don't know how I can help. And I had someone recently say that they were from, you know, I, I think, let's say Iceland. They, they, they told me they were from Iceland, so they can't really help with everything that's found in America. They just don't know it. And two weeks later, I posted something from Iceland. I, I really just, the first step, which is like the easiest is just follow the page um, and, and try to like look at everything to see if you recognize anybody or any place. And the second one is to support on Patreon. Um, I'm trying to build a community. It's still very early days there, but I'm trying to build a community of people who are um, a little more dedicated in, into supporting this kind of project. Um, and obviously there are perks that you get in return, but I think that that's the best way that financially, I think it'll help build a community closer, like get people more interested in, in the behind the scenes and, and like really be a part of the process, not only because they get that behind the scenes, but also because they're financially supporting this museum. And just so everyone knows, what is the handle is Museum of Lost Memories? Like at the Museum of Lost Memories? Museum of Lost, yep, at Museum of Lost Memories on Instagram and TikTok and um and the Patreon is patreon.com slash M-O-L-M. Well, I hope anyone who's listening to this certainly at minimum follows because really it is some awesome, awesome. If you like old photos, it's an awesome, you know, even just to scroll through it. It's really, really beautiful. Some of these old photos um, and just the, you know, just the possibility of being able to help out to connect someone with them is uh, is totally worth it. Um, any, any last words? I don't know. I think we're, you know, kind of 
kind of yeah, come to the I end, unfortunately. It, yeah, I don't know if this is a little counterintuitive to this podcast. It, it might already be, you know, something that people who are listening already know. But I, I recommend everyone to, di- to digitize their family memories, scan your photographs, sit sit with you know the older people in your family to try to you know, write the names on the back of photographs that people aren't identified in yet. Um, digitize your VHS tapes because those have an expiration date, your eight millimeter reels, if you're lucky to have any from your family. Try to just um, digitize and 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 preserve all of your own personal memories as best as you can. And, and if you do that, hopefully they won't end up lost and in my possession um, and you'll be able to hold on to them for years to come. So I think that's well, it. Well, you heard it. That's that's from an expert. You now you guys know what to do to make sure everything lasts as long as possible. And I'm gonna make sure I go back and talk to my family about it, making sure we have everything in line. I know every time I go home, I get the 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 conversation from my parents like today's the day we're gonna scan our photos. But I know it's just <laughs> like you know on, on a on a weekend trip home it's hard. Um, yeah, but it. but we're, we're but I, I'm hoping to do the same, and I really hope everyone honestly is able to do so. And um, uh, but David, thank you so much for for being here. This is really it's really been a treat to hear like the ins and outs of the uh, Museum of Lost History. Obviously, you know, to be able to follow you is one thing, but to really be able to speak to you and hear the passion you have for not only your own family's memories, but like literally everybody's memories. And that's that is truly special. Um, so thank you so much again for being here. Thank you so much. It was it was a pleasure. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. And with that, we have unfortunately come to the end of this episode of Photomind Talks podcast. Uh, thanks again, David. We'll, guys, we'll talk to you guys soon.